Last week we talked about the Fuji GFX 50S and today we're going to be talking about the 50R. But first I'm going to take a second to pay some bills and thank my sponsor today which is Squarespace. If you're a photographer you need a website and Squarespace is the best all-in-one platform to make that happen. They have tons of great looking templates that are easy to use and set up yourself. You can show off your work there and even have an online store so that way you can sell your own prints or any other products that you might have. If you want to try it out you can do so completely free at Squarespace com but if you want to get signed up I can save you some cash by going to squarespace.com slash Matt Day and you can get 10% off your first purchase. Now the Fuji GFX 50R. Um, I mentioned last week in the GFX 50S video that I was really curious about this camera and I really wanted to try and get my hands on one and lo and behold the people at Midwest Photo were able to make that happen. So I rented this from Midwest Photo for about the last week. Uh, it's a great camera store in Columbus, Ohio. They have tons of different things, anything photography related, but their rental department is great as well. And they were able to get a 50R just for the sake of me making this review. So huge thanks to Midwest Photo for making this happen. Um, I have thoroughly enjoyed using this camera for the last week. And I mentioned in the last video that it's a pretty interesting camera for a couple of reasons, but mainly the fact that they've kind of stripped it down. It's in a rangefinder style body, so it's uh, a little bit more compact than the 50S, and it's $1,000 cheaper than the 50S. So it's a really interesting thing to have digital medium format at this level, at this price point. Um, but you know, enough about the price. We don't need to really get into that. I want to talk more about just shooting the camera and how I actually got along with it. Now, obviously being a rangefinder style body, it's just sort of this big brick and um, some people will like that. Some people will hate it. It definitely does not have as much of a solid grip as the GFX 50S does. It's sort of a trade off with that. You know, you trade off the, the bigger size and more comfort for a smaller size and cheaper price. So uh, for me it really wasn't that bad. I'm getting better with my grip in my right hand as my nerves are regenerating from everything and uh, for me I was able to comfortably you know go out and shoot with this thing. So you do have a bit of a, a bump on the back of the camera for your thumb and that kind of helps you know get a good solid grip on the camera. So it's not as comfortable. Still nice to shoot with though. Um, it's just a big brick. Um, putting this next to my X-T3 is pretty hilarious honestly. Um, even though you know I'm used to shooting bigger cameras like the Pentax 67, Mamiya RZ67, uh, this is obviously much smaller than those, but just seeing a Fuji uh, camera like this uh, just kind of blown up, it's pretty comical. This really looks like a bigger version of the X-T3. There's no optical viewfinder, it's only the EVF, which is right here on the side of the camera, similar to the X-T3, and there's no D-pad on the back of the camera. You have this little joystick, and that's it. So to navigate your menus, your focus point, all that stuff, it's all based on this little joystick, which for me, I don't really see an issue with that. Um, I know some people feel kind of odd about there being a lack of D-pad, but after using the camera, I don't miss the D-pad at all. Um, as a matter of fact, whenever I picked up my X-T3 afterwards, it kind of felt like there was just, uh, you know, this extra thing there that didn't need to be there. I find myself using the joystick, even on my X-T3, um, just so much uh, more than using the D-pad. It's just quicker to get through menus and things like that, so um, I actually don't mind that at all. However, uh, they did add a lot of touchscreen functions to kind of make up for the lack of D-pad. So a lot of times people will customize the D-pad to be different functions, and I use that on my X-T3 all the time, but uh, I don't like touchscreen functions. I know some people love it and they've been dying to see that implemented in more cameras. I, that's just a personal preference thing. I just find them to be not responsive, not tactile enough. And so the first thing I did whenever I uh, kind of got this thing set up for me to start shooting was I turned off all of the touch, touch screen functions. Uh, everything in the playback, the, the function touch screen swipes and all that. I turned that completely off and uh, I didn't have to worry about it and that's great that I can do that. I'm glad that it doesn't force me to use the function. Um, it's nice being able to turn that off. On top of that, you do have the, the thumb dial on the back of the camera, but you don't have one on the front. Instead, you have this little dial around the shutter button. Normally, this is where you would turn the camera on and off, whereas that's been replaced by a little switch off to the side. And now you kind of have this small dial that spins around the uh, shutter release button. Some people have this set to the ISO, but I found, found myself that this got bumped pretty easily. So I ended up just moving the ISO uh, function button to somewhere else on the back of the camera. 
and then I just turned off the function of this little dial around the shutter release. Um, some people might love that feature. Again, it was just one of those things that I didn't really see myself using, so I just turned it off. Um, I do like that I'm able to turn off features and really strip this down as just as simple as I can possibly make it, and it's been really enjoyable to shoot because of that. The back of the camera is really clean and simple. You have some function buttons that you can assign to whatever you want. You have your basic things like your menu button, display button, view mode button, things like that. There's really not a lot to it, and that's actually one of the things I really like about it, the fact that it's so simple to use, and there's not a whole lot going on. And again, just like I mentioned in the 50S video, if you've used any X camera before, you can pick this up and get started right away. And it has the same sensor as the 50S. You know, the same sensor, same battery size. It has two card slots if you're interested in that sort of thing. Uh, I know there's been a lot of uproar in the photography community about that lately, but uh, it's just this big brick with a nice sensor inside, big chunky battery. I walked around a lot yesterday and shot on one battery and didn't even come close to draining it. So the batteries on these are nice and big and I found them to be more than enough for my kind of shooting. And I tried to use this camera for my style of shooting all around. So in low light, focusing on the kids as they're running around the house, um, the autofocus is definitely not as you know snappy as my X-T3. You know, a lot of times it'll kind of go a little bit past focus and come back and then lock in, whereas the X-T3 just kind of meets focus pretty much automatically. There is definitely some time there that you're going to have to get used to it and you know, wait on the autofocus a little bit more than you would with something like the, the X-T3, but I still think it's definitely usable. One thing that definitely helps the autofocus if you're shooting portraits, especially for me as I was taking photos of my kids, is turning on the face detect and eye detect autofocus. Uh, it finds that really quickly. That's one thing I love about the Fuji system in general, and that goes same for the 50R here. Um, I was able to use that with photos of my kids, and I was blown away by how much quicker it focused whenever it knew to track the face or the eye, so that was extremely helpful. The manual focus is nice and smooth, really enjoyable to use, and again, with the focus peaking, I find that it's really hard to miss focus. There was one photo I was really excited about that I was able to shoot with this camera and the 63 millimeter lens, which is what I've been using the entire week I've had this. This is a great lens. Uh, but we were over at my mom's house, and she was baking in her kitchen, as she does. And ever since we first found out we were having a girl, she's always wanted to be in the kitchen baking with her granddaughter. That's just been like a dream of hers. And as she was in the kitchen baking, and she had an apron on, um, our daughter Nora, she had grabbed this little hand towel and was kind of wrapping it around her as if she was wearing an apron herself. And uh, it was just a simple little moment, but it just made my mom's day. And I was able to get a photo of that as my mom kind of leaned in and gave her a kiss. And uh, just being able to use something like this for quick, candid stuff like that, I was really, really surprised. The shutter and even the focusing of the lens is definitely not as quiet as the X-Series, uh, like the X-T3 would be at least. Um, you can see the lens kind of bouncing around all over the place as it's, you know, achieving focus. Um, and then you can hear the shutter if you'd like. I actually like the sound of the shutter. Again, not a big deal, but I always talk about that. The lens will actually retract if you press uh, the playback button or if you turn the camera off. So you can see here, I just press the playback button and then whenever I'm done, it comes back out. So one thing I've found is uh, by accident, I will you know, be reviewing a photo and I'll kind of have my hand kind of on the lens. And if I try and you know, turn the camera on and it blocks it, a little error issue will pop up saying, you know, turn the camera off and turn it back on. Basically, you just have to remember that if you're turning the camera off or turning it on using the uh, playback feature, anything like that, just keep your hand away from the lens because it needs that room to move. And if there's anything obstructing that, it's going to give you an error saying turn it off and turn it back on. So uh, just something to keep in mind. If you're not used to something like that, like on my X-T3, the lenses that I have, they don't extend out uh, whenever they're trying to focus. So whenever you, uh, you know, turn the camera off or anything like that, you don't have to worry about it. So just something to keep in mind. In all honesty, there's not a whole lot for me to talk about with this thing. Um, I covered a lot of the things in the GFX 50S video, and this is just that same camera in a different body. So there's not a whole lot to say. Um, Comparing the two, that again is tough and it's a personal preference thing. I think the GFX 50S is a lot more comfortable to shoot with, but you're getting something smaller and uh, some people really prefer that rangefinder style uh, shooting experience. So maybe that's something that other people would gravitate towards more than others. 
maybe you want to spend a thousand dollars less and you'd want to pick up the 50R. Uh, there's a lot of things to consider here. Um, another thing to consider is do you even need medium format, digital medium format at least. Um, I think it's very specific, the kind of person who needs this. Then again, uh, as photographers, we often like to just get things because they're fun, even if we don't need them. So I am not in the market for a 50R because my budget does not allow that right now. Um, but if there is ever a circumstances where something comes up and I'm able to get my hands on one of these and whether it be in a trade or, or whatever, um, I probably wouldn't pass it up because I really have enjoyed using this camera a lot. The files are great. Um, I was able to shoot a lot of stuff around the house with the family and uh, just using something like this in that kind of environment, um, it opened up a lot of possibilities, I think. So it's a lot of fun to shoot with. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments below. So if you have any questions or anything you'd like to share about the GFX or where Fuji is heading, definitely let me know in the comments below. So thank you guys for everything. Huge thanks to Midwest for loaning this to me, and I'll see you guys next time.